Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Yeah, I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we've got some pretty great news as the uh, crypto markets continues to dominate. And first up, cryptocurrencies are now worth more than the American banking system. So we'll take a look at what's going on with all this great news on top of the fact that now that cryptocurrencies have actually caught up, now we're going to see more of the institutions like Goldman Sachs go, you know what, I think this is something we should really get into. On top of that, we'll take a look at what's going on in XRP as it hits a two-month price high in the wake of an Ether rally. And that's really not the big news. The big news is that the strong hands of the XRP community really has led to this uh, fantastic surge. So we'll take a look at what's going on there. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. Before we do that, uh, just to talk about a couple of things. Uh, I, we are back from Puerto Rico. It was a fantastic trip. If you have ever have an opportunity to go there, it is a great place. It's beautiful. It's nice. And uh, right now, as far as property goes, it's uh, just really just blowing up everywhere. So I'm going to do a video about the uh, ramifications and all the things you really need to know to actually, if you want to move over there, tax benefits going from like 30 to 50% taxes to 0% to 4%, uh, how much time you actually have to stay there, all the legal document, the, uh, the paperwork and everything else. And I'm actually going to bring in people who live over there and people you can talk to as far as like real estate agents and even people to get the paperwork going. So I will put that all together, of course, for free, and it'll be on the YouTube channel on top of, we'll put it over there at danteacherscrypto.com. Again, 100% free website. If you haven't checked it out, please do so. So uh, we'll do all those things. And that is the first part. The second part is you notice that I do not have any earphones in. Finally got uh, this SM7B microphone and an actual arm that holds it. So now I have to just hold the darn thing and actually use my hands and express myself and all that good stuff. So uh, we'll uh, this will work out, uh, hopefully, and if it does uh, do its job, then uh, we'll stick with this microphone. Anyhow, this is what's going on uh, with the markets. First of all, the market cap is, uh, it was at two over $2 trillion, so congratulations, we made it. We did a $2 trillion market cap. And imagine, just a year ago, uh, everybody was talking about how cryptocurrency was dead, digital assets were going nowhere, uh, you know, you had some gold bugs who were just dancing on the grave uh, of all of us and going, you guys were morons. Well, who's laughing now, sucker? And uh, it's going to only really increase uh, as time goes on. Um, not financial advice, of course, uh, for entertainment purposes only. But if you're just getting in right now, this is a fantastic time to be in crypto and digital assets. So right now we dipped a little bit, 1.97 trillion. And like I've always talked about, as long as there's people out there who are... Uh, you know, need to take profits or who like to manipulate or who are just plain out greedy, uh, you're going to see these fluctuations. This is normal. This is okay. 10%, 20% is a big deal in uh, traditional markets. Uh, of course, in crypto markets, we call that a Tuesday. So nobody cares. All right. So here's what we got as far as the market and what is going on. Let me do a little close up real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So Bitcoin, 58.3, kind of hovering around that, that price point. It went above 60, but it couldn't really maintain. But here we are. Ethereum is doing a fantastic price rally, 21.27. And, you know, hey, pretty good. Seven days, it's up 50, 15%. Uh, Bitcoin is down 1%. But um, if you are if you are heavily invested in the Bitcoin, Ethereum, this is great, right? You don't really care because you're like, oh, it's going up. If you are new to this, uh, I can't tell you what to invest in, but always look a little bit further down in the charts to see uh, what kind of fantastic gains you can get. And everybody's goals are different, and we've done plenty of videos on those, but this is uh, you know, some of the good stuff, like Binance Coin, 31%, XRP, 71%, Tether, nobody cares about that, it's just a stable coin, Cardano, eh, 4%, but still, hey, what are you going to do? Polkadot, 26%, 9%, everything is up, let's just uh, call a spade a spade, anything down, geez, that's what we should be talking about, 10% uh, for Theta token, but again, Theta had a great run, so can't uh, discount that. 152% for BitTorrent. Let me say it again, 152%. So BitTorrent is one of those Tron projects and it's supposed to do uh, you know, really great things as far as uh, file sharing and uh, file and all that good stuff. But the thing with BitTorrent is what's really led to this massive uh, run. There's a couple of things. One of the big things I heard is that it's almost got like 900, I think it's like 900 billion uh, market supply uh, or... Um, 900 billion token supply. So check me in the comments, but they just they just burned 300 billion worth of tokens. So of course you have the same demand, 
uh, but you have less supply, then the price will go up. So that's a good move. That's actually one of the, as I call the XLM stellar move. They did the same thing and uh, their price went up as well. This was a while ago though. So everything's up, uh, looking pretty good. 50% 50, 50 for EOS. What the heck? You know, it's a crazy day when EOS is up. <laughs> and I make fun of EOS because I own EOS. And uh, I think it's uh, one of my, one of my crazy holds. And then let's take it, let's click on the projected range for trade the chain. If you're looking for trade the chain, the link's in the description. It uses sentiment analysis and gives you 90% accuracy about uh, what it could potentially do in the next hour or four hours and so on and so forth. So if you're a trader, I'm not. Look at uh, Helium, Rari, Qtum, Alpha Finance, Omisego, Gas, Venus, Vertcoin, Digibyte. Those are the ones that are could potentially go up uh, massively over the next hour to four hours. So that's what's going on in the market. Let's break into today's top stories, shall we? All right, I love these stories. I love these stories, not because um, you know it really changes the mind for us. We already know where we're at. What it changes the mind is all the people that have been left behind and lied to and bamboozled by saying, hey, this crypto and digital assets is just a fraud and a scam and everything else. You need to stay away because all the money laundering and all the uh, cartels use it. So when you have something like this, it just reinforces people going, oh, wait, this is a big thing. And then when we start to see like these big traditional players come in, then like, oh, they screwed me again and they lied to me. And uh, this is why I like these stories, because it shows people it's OK. Come in the water. Everything's fine. So cryptocurrencies now with more than American banking system. <laughs> All right. So as the uh, title suggests, the total crypto market has surpassed the value of the S&P Composite 1500 Banks Index, which tracks the performance of publicly traded banking institutions in the US. And I want to blow up this picture, um, not because I like to brag. I mean, I do like to brag. I, I'm, I'll just, I'll tell you that's the truth. But uh, what I like about this, and it's kind of hard to see, is that you see right here, 2017, this is the total cryptocurrency universe market value. And that's pretty much when I got into it, you know, 20, 2018. And if you take a look at it, you know, 800 billion. Oh, that's a nice, you know, good for you, Timmy. That's a that's a pretty good uh, valiant effort that you did. But look at how far above all the uh, the banking systems in America were as far as like this S and P composite. They're like, that's nice. And then of course it just crashed the ground. And everybody's like, haha, you morons. So when you see something like this, you're like, you realize just how small that big, huge play was back in 2017. Because it, I mean, that was a big one when I came in and then just kind of crashed the ground. Of course, these guys went to, you know, their basic levels. But as time went on, you can see here 2019, I mean, there was a dip. Everybody, everybody took a big dip, right? And then we had a little bit of a surge, but still it was way above us, right? But then look at this, look in 2020 when that huge, ginormous crash came about. Uh, this was uh, because of the coronavirus pandemic. And I don't, I don't really want to hear about if you believe about it or not. I don't really care about that. What I really care about is that uh, the news shaped the markets and there was a huge, enormous drop. And there was a drop here. We felt it in cryptocurrency. But look at that drop in the banking sector. Holy smokes. And then here we are and here we are. And before you know it, bang, we're above everybody. Or we're above uh, this system in the uh, banking system. So when I take a look at that, um, first of all, it says to me that the banks should have been paying attention, but the banks aren't innovators. Let's just be honest. Uh, when's the last time you went to the bank and like, hey, we got this really great thing that's really going to speed up the whole process and it's going to be really great for you? <laughs> Never happens. Banks kind of suck. Not bank employees are great. But the banks themselves, uh, especially the ones at the top, the ones that kind of shape everything, they're kind of stuck in this big, huge uh, slog, and they really can't do too much. So when cryptocurrencies and assets really start to catch up to them, it's already too late. The same thing happened with Netscape Navigator. Same thing happened uh, with Blockbuster. Uh, fill in the blank. The same thing happened with like MySpace. Fill in the blank of any technology that really came over and just ate everybody's lunch. Same thing happened with Airbnb and hotels. Uh, before you know it, now if you don't pay attention to the competition around you, uh, you just got blockbustered. And that's essentially what is happening here. And now the banks have been put on notice, and I think they're really feeling that crunch. So uh, this is what we have for just this little snippet here. And uh, it just makes you realize, hey, uh, we're in the right place at the right time. Anyhow, to finish this up, uh, despite its this declining dominance, 
Bitcoin allow alone is still now worth more than JP Morgan, Chase, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo combined. So if we take a look at the total market cap, roughly 2 trillion, uh, Bitcoin's like 1.1, 1.2 trillion. It's still bigger than all these banks combined. So when they were talking about how it's a fraud and a scam and everything else, well, first of all, they were still doing things behind the scenes because they don't want you to know because that's not how the banks make money. And of course, uh, this all happened and uh, that's okay. Uh, the smart ones, the ones who took the time and did their own research, they realized, hey, uh, this is a great opportunity. So now they're like, well, now it's public and we can't keep the genie in the bottle, so we better get uh, in front of it as fast as possible. But the train kind of has left the station. A year ago, for comparison, the whole crypto market cap was smaller than that of JP Morgan, largest US bank, and now here we are. So what's next? And this is the interesting part to me. If the crypto market cap doubles from here, which two trillion to four trillion, not a, I say it like it's not a big deal, but I'm telling you right now, my price prediction for Bitcoin is 150,000 by the end of the year. And we talk about the analysis and why that is totally doable and it's not a big thing. So right now, uh, you're looking at 60,000, right? So to double, it'd be 120,000. I think we can hit that, wouldn't be a big deal. It will surpass the value of all American financial companies, which includes brokers, exchanges, asset managers, and finance and leasing companies. But you have to understand one more thing. When Bitcoin doubles, it pulls all the altcoins along with them. And if we take a look at what happened in 2017, actually altcoins will outpace even Bitcoin itself. So to hit 4 trillion, 5 trillion, I don't see the problem. In order to eclipse all financial companies across the globe, the total crypto market cap will need to quadruple. So um, two times four, let me do some quick math here. That's uh, $8 trillion. And again, do I think that's doable? Yeah, sure. Because um, look at gold. Gold's been around for a long time. I own gold and silver. So don't beat on me when I say what I'm about to say. And that is that this, gold has a $12 trillion market cap. And what really does gold do? Well, it's a great store of value. It's been around for centuries. It's been around since the beginning of time. And it'll be uh, around after you and I are gone. However, it doesn't really do a ton of other things that like Bitcoin can do. First of all, and I'm not going to go over it, especially in this channel, but if you're new to cryptocurrency, just go to Dan Teaches Crypto. I'm going to spare you all a bunch of time and you can just watch the videos on why uh, Bitcoin and gold and why Bitcoin's a little bit better than that. And then off we go. So just like this, I'll just say this to finish it up. Uh, that is that these institutions have been put on notice and now they're going to start changing their tune because they don't get in front of it. They already seen what's happened before, so why wouldn't they, uh, you know, really try to steer the ship as best they can before they just get left behind? And it's okay. That happens. It's all right. Let it happen. Be be okay. So on top of that, so when we see these, you know, these institutions really start to slide, now you're going to see this type of stuff. Goldman Sachs CEO expect big evol evolution in crypto industry. All of a sudden, everybody becomes a cheerleader. It's amazing. So this is from. Uh, April 6th interview on Squawk Box, Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon said, this is a space that's evolving. Sure. I think there will be a big evolution as to how this evolves in the coming years. It's a nice empty statement. Despite significant regulatory roadblocks, Goldman Sachs is looking for ways to support crypto for its clients due to an outpouring of demand. And then it goes over some other things, which are just boring. I just want to throw this in for just for context, which is, If you're a sports team, and of course you just get beat up uh, or you dominate forever, right? Let's take like uh, the Pistons in the 80s, you know, they just dominated everybody forever, right? And they didn't really have to look too much. Then all of a sudden when the Bulls started to come up, they got a little bit, a little better. And then when the Bulls passed them in that one great game that didn't even shake hands, I think people remember this, some of you who are old like me, then all of a sudden Pistons couldn't win anymore. And uh, they had a real hard time because the young bucks really outpaced them. And we'll see this throughout sports. We'll see this throughout businesses. We'll see this throughout technology. And it's very hard to really uh, claw back once you start to get passed over because people just realize uh, what the better thing is. And then it just gives you that confidence to really move forward. So uh, you're going to see a lot more stories like this. And this will convince the people that are on the sidelines going, I don't really know. This will propel them to do these types of things. This is why I cover it. So if you have any stubborn moms and dads and aunts and uncles, and even grandparents, you can show them like, hey, the places that you invest into are now getting behind it. And I think you should really take a deep look into this before it passes you by. Now, financial advice, do your own research. I think that's where we're headed. All right.
And then to finish all this up, let's talk a little XRP. So first of all, congratulations XRP holders. I personally sold a bunch of XRP because I had to do some, uh, it's not considered wash trading, but it is great for uh, tax reasons. And that's what I did, but I bought it right back. And uh, I'm pretty happy today because look, XRP, it's two month high in the wake of the ether rally. And there's a couple of reasons behind this. If you follow XRP, put this in the comments below, but I believe that there was one Southeast Asia or some kind of Asian bank that was like, we are going to use XRP almost exclusively for a cross border uh, payments. And this was a big thing. A lot of different uh, countries and regions and different banks in those regions have not classified uh, XRP as a security, only in America, only <laughs> in America. So there's a lot of great things happening with XRP as far as positive news. It's like my friend CJ says over at Market Rebellion, always be aware of the asset that should have gone away and should have crumbled, but still sticks around. That is resiliency, and that is what people like to see. People love a winner, and uh, XRP is winning right now. So this was actually, you're going to see these types of comments, and uh, I just want you to be aware. And it states, we're not seeing anything specific to XRP, and the move feels more like an altcoin season type move, given our performance in other tokens as well. Joel Kruger, uh, currency strategist at LMAX Digital. And he starts to name things like Tron and Sia Coin and so on and so forth. And uh, again, like I talked about, there's a lot of good news I think that not everybody knows. And I think XRP is doing those types of things. Will it uh, hit its all-time high this bull run? <laughs> Who knows? But that SEC uh, lawsuit does hang heavy. With a move to two-month highs, XRP has now completely reversed losses suffered in December after the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filed a case against Ripple. And that's pretty much uh, the big story. So I just want to give uh, a shout out to all the XRP holders. It wasn't easy, but uh, you guys did it. And uh, I personally didn't think it would rally this much. I thought it would trade sideways for quite a long time and not do anything. But hey, I'm uh, happy that I'm wrong. And that is it for today. So look, uh, first of all, if you made it all this way, I want to say thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, it would really help if you just hit that thumbs up. It helps the channel tremendously. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are uh, time sensitive. And that is it for today. Also, later today, I'm going to be doing an interview uh, over on Alex Maschioli's. I won't do the interview. It's over on Alex Maschioli's channel. We're going to talk to uh, Simon Yao or you from uh, uh, Stormex to see what's going on. Some big announcement coming on. Don't know what it is. I'm not We'll see what is going on, but uh, catch me over there later today. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. 